Good morning, Energy Express friends. How are you today? Have you ever made a simple machine? Well, I think it's time we do. Let's join in our friends, Jen and Ben, and learn all about simple machines. Hi, I'm Jen Robertson Honiger, the STEM specialist for WVU Extension's 4-H Youth Development Program. And I'm Ben Honiger. Today we're going to be doing the STEM Care sponsored activity, Aisha Makes Work Easier. This is part of an activity um, that Energy Express uh, participants would have gotten a kit of materials for, along with the book, Aisha Makes Work Easier. So today we're going to go through the story and read up some of the chapters in the story and then do some of the activities that follow along with the kit materials. Breakfast with Malcolm. Breakfast is served. Aisha danced across the kitchen with a carton of milk in her hand. It won't be served if you spill that milk all over the floor, her brother Malcolm said. Aisha grinned. Malcolm shook his head and smiled back. Aisha and Malcolm didn't get to hang out as much as they used to now that he was in college studying to be an industrial engineer. But today their dad had to work at the restaurant and he was leaving Malcolm to look over Aisha and their cousin Tanya. When Malcolm first went to college, Aisha had no idea what an engineer did, but now she knew. Engineers are people who use their creativity and knowledge of math and science to design things, systems, or processes that solve problems. Aisha was very proud of her brother. Malcolm's game. When Tanya arrived, the girls sat in the dining room trying to think of something they'd learn or done over the summer that would make a good project. Malcolm sat down at the other end of the table, spreading out some drawings. Since you two are finally getting down to business, I thought I'd do some work of my own, he said. Tanya peered over his shoulder. I thought you worked at a potato chip factory. What do all these drawings have to do with making potato chips? Or eating them, Aisha asked. You do get to eat the chips, don't you? Sometimes, said Malcolm, but mostly I help the factory improve the systems that their workers use. I try to make their work easier or faster or safer. That's what industrial engineering is all about. What do you mean, Tanya asked. I'll give you an example. See my textbooks. See the textbooks? He pointed to a pile of thick books Pretend they're a crate of potatoes. Try pushing them across the table. Aisha pushed the books and slid them from one end of the table to the other. Wow, they're pretty heavy. Malcolm reached into his book bag and pulled out a bunch of pencils. He lined them up on the table and put the pile of books on top. Try pushing them now. Hey, that's a lot easier, Aisha exclaimed. The pencils act like little wheels. They help make work easier by reducing friction, Malcolm explained. Making work easier, Tanya said. Last year in school, we studied things that help make work easier. Simple machines. Things like levers and wheels and axles, right? Exactly, said Malcolm. We use lots of simple machines at the factory. All the big machines are made up of smaller parts called subsystems. A lot of the time, those subsystems are made up of simple machines. The simple machines help the workers get more done because each job is easier and the workers are less likely to get hurt too. That's what we can do our project on, Aisha cried. We can show how simple machines make the work at our factory easier. Now you're thinking, Malcolm said, hmm, with that project, it looks like you'll finally get your wish to go check out the chips. We'll go sometime this week. The girls cheered. But, he added, I think there's a lot of cool stuff you could learn about simple machines before we head to the fa factory. Aisha frowned. Like what? Simple machines aren't just in factory subsystems, Malcolm said. They make work easier all over. Let's go on a scavenger hunt. If you show me some simple machines that you spot today, I'll show you how I use them at the factory. Deal? Deal, the girls shouted. I think I know a good place to start, said Malcolm. Let's go visit my friend Sean at the theater. I bet he'll have lots of simple machines to show us. As Aisha reached for the door of the coat closet, she called out, hey, I found one. She pointed to the door handle. 
A lever, you're right, said Malcolm. And inside the handle, where we can't see, there's another simple machine, a wheel and axle. See, we haven't even left the house yet, and you're already well on your way. So here we can see the door that's both a lever and a wheel and axle. In the story uh, chapter that we just read, Aisha, Tanya, and Malcolm were talking about simple machines, and they were gonna go on a simple machine scavenger hunt. Let's go on a scavenger hunt here on the table. So on the table, we have all six examples of the simple machines. Can you point them out to me one at a time? What's, where's one? Point one out to me. Well, this is a screw. This is a screw, right. So a screw lid is a type of screw, right? And what are some other types of screws? Um, examples like of? Like a screw. A screw, right? Or a um, wine cork screw is another example. Um, yeah, there's uh, lots of examples in your home that uh, are screws. What, what about what's inside of this container? Uh, there's a pulley. Yeah, these are pulleys. Right? And so um, some other examples of pulleys you might see in everyday life would be a crane or a flagpole. Those are types of pulleys, okay? Um, what other examples do we have here on the table? Um, there's a wheel and axle. A wheel and axle. So what's the example of the wheel and axle here on the table? Well, there's there's these cars and also on the pulley. There is, right. On this pulley, there's a wheel and axle and these cars are examples of a wheel and axle. Great. Other examples around the house would be a doorknob, right? Um, what are some other examples? Can you think of any? A car. A car, your bicycle, right? Bicycle. Yeah. Um, what else do we have here? What's uh, this? That's an incline, incline plane. Right, and an incline plane, um, sometimes we call it a ramp. Um, a slide is an example of an incline plane. All right, we're still missing two types of simple machines and we have here at the table. Can you um, think of them? The lever. The lever, right? So a lever is a bar or a board with a fulcrum point. And here we can see a seesaw is a type of lever, the back of a hammer is a type of a, of a lever, um, a crowbar, a wheelbarrow is a type of lever, okay? And we have one more example on the table. Well, this happens to be a lever and a wedge. And a wedge, right. So scissors are examples of two. So here is the fulcrum point, so it's a lever, but more importantly, the part that helps us cut, that's a wedge. So knives are wedges, cookie cutters are wedges, and nails are types of wedges. All right, so we've listed, we, on our scavenger hunt, we've found all six types of our simple machines. Screws, pulleys, wheel and axle, lever, lever, wedge, and an incline plane. Good job. All right, so let's open up our kit. And again, if you are an Energy Express participant this summer, you should have received the Aisha Makes Work Easier book and the kit material. So let's open this up. And in the last chapter we just read, Malcolm shows Aisha and Tanya his stack of textbooks. And in his stack of tech, with his stack of textbooks, what does Aisha, what does he ask her to do? Um, do you remember? Oh, push it across the table. Push it across the table. So here I have a big stack of books, and I want you to do the same thing that Aisha did. Okay. Okay. That's pretty heavy, right? Yeah. Not too hard to push, but not too easy either. So let's look at the materials inside of our kit bag. What can we use from our kit, just like Malcolm did, to help make that work easier? What simple machine can we create? Um, we can create the pencils. The pencils, yeah, he used pencils, and we have these rods, and he used the pencils as an example of what? Um. Wheel and axle. Wheel and axle, right. So wheels and axles, sometimes we think of them being very complex, like on a car or a bike, but they can be very simple. So which, so we actually have two sets here of things that roll, like wheel and axle. Which do you think we should use? The 
these ones. These ones here. So yeah, you chose the little ones. Why didn't you choose the big one? It actually rolls really nicely. Because because there's only one of them and it'll work like a lever and it'll be unbalanced. It'd make it unbalanced. So let's test it and see how that happens. So if I pick this up and we put the books on top, it does roll really nicely, but then what happens? It's unbalanced. It's unbalanced, right. Have you ever tried to um, ride a unicycle? No. No, you've never tried a unicycle? I've really, tried. But it's, it's, is it easy or hard? Hard. It's really hard, because there's only one wheel, so it's unbalanced, so it's difficult to do. So, so we only have one of those bars. We won't use that one. So instead, you said we should use these. How can we set these up to be an example of a wheel and an axle for the books? What should we do? Spread them out. Spread them out. Okay. You put the books on top. Go ahead. All right, now go ahead and give it a try. It's a lot easier? Yeah. yeah. And what did what did he say that, that the wheels and axles do? They help reduce friction. Friction. Great. Good job. A visit to the Museum of Science. After lunch, Malcolm led the girls to the Museum of Science. As soon as she stepped inside, Aisha's eyes lit up. What is that? asked Aisha, pointing to the machine in front of her. The machine inside, a plastic case, had lots of metal parts that were moving some balls around. I bet we can find some simple machines in there, Tanya said. This is like a Rube Goldberg machine, Malcolm explained. Usually, when someone designs a machine, they try to make a complex process simple, using as few steps as possible. The goal of a Rube Goldberg machine is just the opposite. Machines like this are designed to make a simple process complicated, using as many steps as possible. It's more fun this way. Look at how many cool steps it takes to move the little balls around, said Tanya. She watched the ball move from the bottom of the machine to the top by taking a ride on a corkscrew. Here we can see the Rube Goldberg ball machine. I see a lever and wheels and axles too, Aisha said. We've barely gone inside the museum and we've already found all kinds of simple machines. I bet we can find more, she said, pulling Malcolm's hand. As they walked up to the huge model of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Tanya pointed to the sharp, pointy wedges that he had for teeth. I wonder if dinosaurs could dance, Aisha giggled. I think the Tyrannosaurus Rex would dance like this. She puffed up her chest and rocked back and forth with a big lumbering step as Tanya and Malcolm laughed. So what would teeth be like? What kind of simple machine would your teeth, like a Tyrannosaurus Rex teeth? A wedge because they cut through something. Exactly. Good job. When they entered the science in the park exhibit, Aisha and Tanya saw children playing on merry-go-rounds and racing toys down inclined planes. Malcolm led them to the seesaw. Hey, Aisha said, that seesaw is a simple machine, isn't it? What kind of simple machine is it? A lever. You're absolutely right, said Malcolm. But which simple machine is it? How do you think it works? That's easy, said Tanya. It's a lever. A board and a bar. Don't forget the fulcrum, said Aisha, pointing to the support under the bar. That's what lets the seesaw swing back and forth. She stretched both of her arms out and swayed like a seesaw. Hey, Malcolm, said Tanya. I bet Aisha and I can lift you up on the seesaw. All right, let's see what you can do, Malcolm said. He climbed onto one end of the seesaw and both girls climbed on the other. Malcolm's end of the board rose and carried him up. That was too easy, Malcolm said. I've got another puzzle for you. Can just one of you lift me up? Everyone got off the seesaw. Aisha and Tanya looked at Malcolm, then the seesaw, then each other. Hmm, said Tanya. I bet I can do it. She climbed on the seesaw close to the pivot point. Now you get on, she told Malcolm. He sat on the other end. His weight pushed Tanya way up in the air. Whoa, Tanya said. I guess I was wrong about what would happen when I moved towards the fulcrum. There's an important clue in that mistake said Malcolm. Now that you've seen what happens, do you have any new ideas? Do you have any new ideas? Um, 
Well, let's find out. I do, exclaimed Aisha. If Malcolm moves towards the middle and Tanya moves back to the end, I bet it will be a lot easier to lift him. Sure enough, Tanya's weight raised Malcolm high in the air. You got it, see? Changing the distance between the fulcrum and the weight changes the force you need to use to lift it. Okay, you can let me down now, Malcolm said, but Tanya only giggled and stayed in place. Come on, Tanya. Nope, she teased. Well, if you don't let me down, then we can't leave. And if we don't leave, then I can't take you to... The potato chip factory, cried Aisha. Tanya quickly slid off the seesaw and the three of them made their way back home. So here we can see the seesaw where Tanya lifts up Malcolm because he's close to the fulcrum and she's far. All right, so in the last chapter we just read, they visited the Museum of Science in Boston um, and they went out to the playground and what did they play on in the playground? The seesaw. The seesaw, and the seesaw is an example of, a, of what type of simple machine? A lever. A lever, right, and a lever is a bar or a board with a fulcrum point. Well, looking at the materials we have in our kits, what do you think we could do to make our own lever? Pieces. We could use that, okay. And what else could book. we use? We could use a book, right? That would be a type of lever. Okay. What's another way we could create a lever from the materials in the kit? We could use this. This? Okay. And so we could just test it as it is, right? Um, so test that as a lever. It kind of rolls. What could we what, what could we do to it to make it a little bit more stable? We could tape it. We could tape it. Okay, so let's try that. Do you want your fulcrum point to be centered? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll hold it down and you tape it. Is that centered? I can't tell. Got it? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, you wanna test it again? All right, so in the beginning, they um, sat on the seesaw like you normally would, right? Uh, and Tanya and Aisha were on either ends. Um, and so we could demonstrate that with our cups by putting our cups on either end. And Aisha and Tanya are about the same weight, so they were able to balance each other out pretty easily, right? Yeah. Okay, so now if we add weight to either side, add one to the other side. Okay, so we have two in this side now, two in that side, okay. And now when we add three, three. So as we add each one, it kind of goes back and forth very easily. How could we demonstrate how they, with Malcolm on one end, who's much, much bigger than Tanya, and how Tanya was able to pick him up even though he was so much heavier. How could we change our lever to demonstrate that? Any ideas? Oh, we could, we could put the, the fulcrum point on the other side. On a different side, okay. We could put a cup on a different side. We could do that too. Let's go ahead and let's change the fulcrum point and see how that works that way. So if we pull those off. So now we, the fulcrum point has changed. And what do you think it's going to happen like with Malcolm and Tanya? Um, who, when, how was Tanya able to pick him up? When he was closer to the fulcrum point or farther from the fulcrum point? When he was closer, okay. So let's put this one here and this one here. So this cup would be an example of Malcolm um, or Tanya? Mal Malcolm. So he's heavier. So you, well, let's go ahead. I'm gonna put, put, there's nothing in this one right now, so let's put one. Oh, still stays. Two, three, four. Took four washers to make this one go. But let's say that Tanya is half 
the weight of Malcolm. So there's two washers and there's four washers. She's still She's still heavier. Yeah, so if I add another one, still doesn't do it. So we're at five, six, seven to two. Try just one more and then see what happens. Yeah, so we can see, even though we have a heavier weight here, because our fulcrum point, the weight is heavier, closer to the fulcrum point, we can push down with less force on this end uh, to move that heavy weight up. I don't know if we have enough washers for that one, you think? Maybe. Almost, we're getting close. Oh. Maybe we have to take a few out of here. Oh, there we go. Good job. A potato chip treat. At home that afternoon, Tanya and Aisha talked about how to present their project in class. We could write about it, said Tanya, but I'd rather just take everybody in our class to the factory. What if we bring the factory to class? That's a great idea, said Tanya. We can pretend a truck drops off potatoes on the floor. If you have to keep reaching down to the floor so you uh, have to pick them up to cook them, then that will make your back hurt. We can design a simple machine subsystem to lift the potatoes up. Let's get Malcolm to help us, said Aisha. The girls ran to find Malcolm and tell him their idea. Malcolm helped the girls gather wood dowels, tubes, and long sheets of cardboard. Okay now, Tanya asked. Now what do we do? But Aisha had already started pulling materials out of the box and putting things together. Just dive in and start building stuff, she cried. Is that a good idea? Maybe? Malcolm interrupted, Aisha, that's one way to get things done, but engineers usually make a plan first. It can be really helpful. But how am I supposed to know what to plan, asked Aisha. I figure things out as I go along. Sometimes engineers do that, explained Malcolm but we have steps to help us too, to be sure that we know what materials we'll need and how we'll f these things will fit together. It's all part of the engineering design process. What's that? asked Tanya. It's a way of doing things step by step, said Malcolm. You've already started asking some good questions to get yourself started. Next, you need to imagine some solutions and then plan it out. You may even want to draw out your plan. Aisha frowned. I can definitely imagine lots of things, but planning is no fun. Come on, Aisha, Tanya said. We'll do it together. Aisha and Tanya sat down on the floor and began sketching. They questioned, compromised, and built on one another's ideas until they had a plan that they thought would work. I think we're ready to go, Tanya told Malcolm. Let's take a look at your plan, Malcolm said. The girls explained their drawing to Malcolm. Malcolm nodded. Looks like you're ready for the next step, creating your subsystem. All three of them began working to bring the plan to life, testing each part along the way. I think we're done, said Tanya, as she taped a pulley to the edge of the counter. How will this work, asked Malcolm. I was thinking it would work kind of like the seesaw we used, we used in the museum, said Tanya. The potatoes will go on one end, and then some weight at the other end will push the seesaw down. Then pot the potato will roll down the ramp in onto the counter. So here we can see the pulley system that they made for the potato, and here she's testing out her lever. Hmm, said Malcolm, let's give it a try. Aisha pushed down on one end of the seesaw. The three of them watched as a few roly-poly potatoes teetered off the side of the ramp. Oh no, Aisha cried. Since there aren't any sides to my inclined plane, the potatoes fall off. That's no good. Malcolm looked at the girls. It looks like it's time for the last step of the engineering design process. Improve. Do you think another simple machine might do the job better? Well, said Tanya, we could use an inclined plane like the one we saw at the factory. Maybe that would work. And we could even make a cart with wheels and axles to carry the potatoes up the inclined plane, Aisha added. The girls and Malcolm worked on their inclined plane and cart until they were satisfied with the whole system. Well, look at that, said Malcolm. You girls really are engineers. I can't wait to show everyone at school all the stuff we learned this summer, said Aisha. The girls began to, dig to giggle as they danced their way over to Malcolm to give him a big hug. 
here we can see their whole subsystem. And what kind of simple machines do they have in their subsystem? Uh, a pulley and inclined plane. An inclined plane and then wheel and axle. And wheel and axle. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so in the last chapter of the story, Aisha makes work easier. She and her cousin Tanya use all the information they learned about simple machines to create a subsystem to lift up potatoes. And I thought we could also use subsystems. And they also used something else that they talked about in that last chapter. Do you remember what it was? In helping them create their, they use, well, they use the plan You in that, what that's called is the engineering, engineering design process. Yeah, the engineering design process. So we will want to make sure we use the engineering design process. And that's the process that engineers and scientists use too to help them come up with a plan to do something, to solve a problem. And the steps of the engineering design process are ask, imagine, plan, create, and improve. So as we're creating our subsystem, we'll want to make sure that we keep that process in mind as we plan, create, and improve our subsystem. Now, their subsystem was about um, potatoes, right? And trying to pull the ta potatoes up to the table without having to lift them. I thought we could make our subsystem into a Rube Goldberg machine. Do you remember when they talked about Rube Goldberg machines in the story? When they were at the museum? Yeah, and what, do you remember what a Rube Goldberg machine is? It was a simple task um, with very, like, that was super, lots of complicated stuff. Right, so instead of, you know, usually we design machines to make um, complex work simple. In a Rube Goldberg machine, we take a simple task and we make it complex. So we're gonna try to use our simple machines. So we talked about levers, Inclined planes, pulleys, pulleys wheel, and wheel and axle, wedge, wedge, and screw. Right? Okay. We'll try to use as many of those simple machines as we can uh, to develop a subsystem that waters a plant. That's going to be our our simple task: is watering a plant. But we're going to do it in a complex system for our root holder machine. And what process are we going to use us to help to help to create? Engineering design process. The engineering design process. Are you ready? Yep. All right. So let's use the, t the materials on the table. Let's start. Okay, friends, now it's time for you to go out, gather up some household items, toys, and tools, and be a part of the Rube Goldberg Water a Plant video challenge. We have some great prizes for the winning machine. Visit extension.wvu.edu slash stemcare to learn how you can get in on the competition. And we had so much fun with today's episode on Simple Machines that you can view an extended version on the Energy Express YouTube channel. Thanks for joining in, and we'll see you next time.